I personally think that animal packs are the way to go now for Planet Zoo. Welcome back everyone, and I hope you all are having a wonderful day so far. Now, I know at one point I was one of the forerunners for constant support for scenery packs for Planet Zoo. Recently, my mind has kind of shifted on this idea, and I would much rather prefer if Planet Zoo gets animal packs consistently in the future. I know this may come as quite a bit of a shock to many of you all, but I love to build in Planet Zoo. I love getting new pieces, but there was something about the last two packs that really didn't settle well for me. Something didn't really strike a chord as much as the old scenery packs did before. Now don't get me wrong, the new scenery packs are some of the best items that we've gotten in the game. We've had some extremely useful items, let's not forget that. We've had backstage props, we've had so many wonderful things from the Europe pack, we've had decals and stuff, but there's something in me that can't just help but wonder, why are we still getting pieces? I'm not sure how many of you are Planet Coaster players, but maybe the term TMTK might be familiar to Planet Coaster and non-Planet Coaster players alike. TMTK, otherwise known as Theme Maker's Toolkit, is a tool that Frontier released for Planet Coaster around the end of development for the game. Essentially what this program allowed you to do was take your own pre-existing models and import into the game via the workshop, thereby allowing you to add new props to the game. I've been at the foreground, again, of this fight to get the TMTK released earlier for Planet Zoo. Granted, I really haven't been that vocal on this front, but I believe it'd be a wonderful thing to include towards the end of development for the game, just because it would be great to get the community to give back to Planet Zoo and bring in a whole bunch of new props. I know so many of you are quite familiar with mods for Planet Zoo. I know that my audience was pretty much accustomed to them at this point, but in case if you guys aren't aware, Planet Zoo does have quite a robust modding community, and especially with props. Now granted, this all falls on the back of one individual in particular, Nicholas Lion Rider, and he has created over, I want to say well over a thousand different props for the game. Having these props officially implemented into Planet Zoo would be a wonderful feat nonetheless. These new props allow for so much gameplay customization, so much more of a shift from your regular style of playing for Planet Zoo. It brings in so many different aspects into the game such as smaller terrariums to even larger things such as big mountains and signs. Now, this kind of goes in point with why I think that animal packs would be the future for Planet Zoo. Of course, nothing is really set in stone, however, we can probably assume that Planet Zoo development has already gone well beyond the 12 DLC that we were originally expecting, and have already started work on those, so whether they be an animal pack for the next round, as well as a scenery pack right after that, we're not really sure what the future of Planet Zoo holds. However, if in the odd chance that my plea gets heard by Frontier, I think it would be beneficial to not only just go forward with Animal Packs, but also release TMTK alongside that. Animal Packs, as you guys can probably guess, release a larger quantity of animals as well as a small amount of props to go alongside them. Animal packs also consist of seven habitat animals as well as one exhibit animal. Meanwhile, juxtaposed to the actual scenery packs, we get four habitat animals and one exhibit animal. Now, coming from my own personal experience, I really did prefer the wetlands pack over the conservation DLC and hopefully later down the line I can release a video that kind of goes over my thoughts overall on the conservation DLC because it really did feel quite divisive amongst the community. Not only that, but it also opened my eyes to animal packs and the real benefit that these things present. However, I'm not going to go too much into that right now because I do want to save that for its own separate video, but I just wanted to let you guys know my thoughts on the conservation DLC, and not just that, but the European DLC as well. Europe presented a whole bunch of new different pieces that we did not have before, not even in the form of blueprints, and that really is one of my biggest qualms of the conservation DLC, 
pretty much all of those pieces we already had as blueprints, and it really had no impact on the gameplay or building style that I was accustomed to. Europe, on the other hand, introduced a whole bunch of new different things. They introduced a whole new wall set, which was extremely usable and viable for so many different builds, as well as decals. Now, decals we didn't really get too much of in the past, and these pieces are extremely useful, and I really do hope we get a lot more of them in the future, because they really do help to influence gameplay. Now, overall, I just wanted to sit back and kind of talk with you guys about this because I know I was oftentimes scrutinized for my opinions on scenery packs uh, versus animal packs, really, and I really wanted to gauge where the community is at right now because I do believe that having both scenery packs and animal packs is a wonderful thing. I'm just not sure how much more scenery we get without it being too redundant and missing out on some really worthwhile animals. But of course, so let me know what you guys have to say in the comments down below. I always love to hear from you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in to another Leaf video. I really do appreciate it and I can't wait to see you all in the next episode. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye bye now.